here we are Sepultura in our studio in Sao Paulo, Brazil. We have a new album coming out called Machine Messiah and uh, we're here to talk about a little bit every track on the album, lyrics and music-wise. It's an album influenced, uh, I mean, first by the trash scene of the 80s, 90s when we record in vinyl. We had songs written for Side B, for the Side A, and uh, that helps us a lot to, to build uh, a direction and a, and a running order for the songs, you know. So, uh, and also the lyric-wise, uh, we have this Machine Messiah concept. It talks about uh, the robotization of society, everything that we need and don't need uh, in the world today. It's not like a futuristic image, but uh, rather what we see nowadays and how many robots are, are a part of our lives. And uh, also in a sense of uh, religion or faith, you know, which faith a robot will have, you know. If this Messiah comes back to, to Earth, uh, he will be like a robot or a humanoid or a biomechanical type or something. So around this concept, we you know, we wrote all the songs and all the lyrics. And we have the first song called Machine Messiah which Derek will talk about the lyrics a little bit. Omisim Mashtaya is a song that's basically, we're trying to write something that was giving the idea of people searching, searching for something, uh, a faith, something they can believe in. And the song primarily starts off with that idea of person searching, lost, and a lot of the turmoil that goes on in the world and a lot of things that we all face in society. And the voice is the robotic, Messiah coming back to earth, the, the hard core voice that you hear in the song. So there's a mixture of two things going on in the song and the lyrics are primarily somebody searching for some type of savior and that savior being the mechanical, robotic, digital world that we live in today. Well, musically, it's a, it's a very slow pace, you know, beginning. It's almost like a big intro of a, a three or four minutes intro for the whole album. It's a very different song from Sepultura. We did something similar when we record Angel from Massive Attack and basically that was kind of the root of our intention here, you know, and uh, I think it sets the tone for expectation of what's coming, you know, next. Song number two, it's I Am The Enemy. Uh, it's basically one of the, the last songs that we work on it. It's very simple, fast forward, like trash core from the 90s. Um, it's, uh, the song talks about, uh, lyrically wise, um, not to blame anything or anyone else for your fuck ups or your beliefs or concepts or preconcepts, you know, because everything is it's, it's done here in your head. It's like uh, the, the way you receive information according to the culture, or the country you come from, religion, education, your family, every little bit of information that you have in your mind that you create your own concepts and preconcepts, you know, so uh, don't blame any, any, anybody or anything else but yourself. So, you know, that's why we are our own enemy, you know, we have to face ourselves to, to try to make a better self in a better world. What happened to me? Feel like I had everything, such a big catastrophe. When I have to deal with the scorpion. But song number three, it's a song called Phantom Self. Uh, the song started with a maracatu, which is a, a Brazilian style, which uh, whatever you guys know, the band Chico Science and Ação Zumbi, they have their, their root of their music based on this rhythm from the northeast of Brazil uh, called maracatu. And then uh, it, it comes like a groovier, groovier part. Jens Bogren, the, the producer of the album, he brought the, the idea or the suggestion to use violins from uh, Enzambo from Tunisia. And uh, that fit very perfectly, you know, with the song. Uh, it, it opened a lot of different uh, possibilities for guitar uh, to work uh, together with the violins as a conversation. And uh, it's the first video clip that we're gonna make for, for the first actual single, you know, from the album. And uh, it seems to be one of the most complete songs that we ever made, you know, in our history and very, you know, happy with it. Uh, Andreas came to me with uh, an article that he showed me and it was about a, a young 
person in the 70s who was in a car accident and he was he survived the accident but he completely lost his identity he completely lost who he who he was and he had he was describing it as having a ghost sometimes appear where he has remnants of his past that would come and, and kind of almost haunt him but the technology at the time uh, people didn't understand what was happening in his brain and how it was shaken in a way where it completely changed the chemistry of who he was and he became a completely different person being within himself so it's about having those the ghosts of the past haunting you and how you can be completely changed a changed person from from certain events that can happen that are very traumatic and uh, I thought this was something very powerful and very deep from reading this article so it made out for a, a very interesting song Song number four is called Alitea, which uh, means truth uh, in Greek, I think. And uh, it's, it, it's a name of, um, how can I put it? There's uh, lots of processes going on in Brazil today um, against corruption in politics. Finally, the, the justice uh, system is working in Brazil and some big political names are in jail. And one of the operations that, that has this name, Alitea, which deals with uh, something with Petrobras in, in our big oil company here that was looted, you know, by these politicians and corruption. And um, I thought it was a really a good uh, uh, name for, for, you know, to, to talk about truth, you know. And then Derek wrote the, the lyrics. Uh, Music-wise, Eloy wrote this loop kind of a crazy loop like a it's more like can you try to explain <laughs> no it's something like the division is different it's like a quintuplet division so it gives like a totally different uh, feel about the song and and i show it to the guys at first and they were a little bit like uh, what the hell is going on here and but uh, like two days after andreas came with uh, an awesome riff so I think it's a really good song, different, pro progressive song. Yeah, it's very groovy and uh, uh, moody, you know, a lot of uh, cool guitar effects, you know, that I work with Jens and, and lyric-wise. Yeah, lyric-wise, it was a lot of what you were saying, the political system here in Brazil. It's impossible to miss being here and living here to witness all the corruption that's been happening for so many years. But what's interesting is that a lot of the public now and people are getting involved and wanting to cancel this this corruption, they want to be done with it. And so it's really the voice of people just being very angry was what I really wanted to capture in the lyrics as far as people just tired of it. You know, they're very angry, they have blood in their eyes and they're tired of having these people rob them of of culture, their livelihood, of, of everything, the basic necessities of life. Song number five is called Iceberg Dances, and uh, it's an instrumental song. Sepultura had many instrumental songs in the past. One of the first songs I wrote with Sepultura was the Inquisition Symphony on the Schizophrenia album, which was an attempt you know, to write uh, a traditional metal instrumental song, like in a, you know, Metallica, and especially Iron Maiden, and Rush, you know, they have like uh, iconic you know, instrumental stuff. And this time, you know, was a, uh, a new attempt, you know, to do that, uh, especially using uh, Brazilian rhythms uh, uh, in a very uh, different way, in different formats. The song changes a lot. That's why, you know, Iceberg dances, because an iceberg never had like a fixed f a place on earth, you know, it's like floating around the sea. Every, every time is a different landscape, you know, and it feels like the song. It, it goes to different uh, vibes and different uh, ideas. Uh, also have like acoustic uh, classical guitar in the middle or something that I wanted to put together with the song and I don't know it, uh, it's, a, it's a great instrumental stuff that is, will be a challenge for us to play live, right? Yeah, right. And <laughs> <laughs> something that cool Are you that ready? Is something cool <laughs> is that we recorded that song without a metronome yeah. because of the, the, the dancing of the icebergs. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> like a lot of Brazilian Blues. influence. I think a lot of Brazilian rhythms influence, so it's gonna be really cool to like. 